Faculty participation in cross-college decision-making is integral to the effectiveness of the Alamo Colleges. A well-designed faculty decision-making model could help us achieve greater and more successful engagement in an area of great fiscal, technological, and social change. The scope of the first phase is the development of a model that engages faculty stakeholders in system-wide non-curricular issues. Recent examples of opportunities for invoking this process include the initiation of the Faculty Mentoring Project and Leadership Institute and the selection of the district-wide learning management system. To ensure transparency and broad faculty participation in making system-wide decisions, a design team was assembled to develop an inclusive decision-making model. The design team is made up of the faculty superintendent and other faculty and staff representatives. This team is focused on the following guiding principles. Make better decisions. Build trust and respect. Establish a culture of inclusive collaboration and communication. Accountability through transparency and defined roles. Make data informed decisions. This team recently engaged approximately 100 representatives of the Alamo College's faculty, staff, administrators, as well as the Board of Trustees in a retreat to collect feedback towards the design of the new model. The design team used the feedback generated from the retreat to create three decision-making model proposals. Your input is important to this process. Please take a moment to consider each design with the following in mind. What do you like about each model? What do you recommend for improvement? Model A. This model places a priority on the robust communication between faculty and college district administration. In order to ensure reliable communication, this model assigns a faculty member to attend PVC meetings and relay information from the meetings back to faculty through Super Senate and all five college senates to faculty at the colleges. The faculty member possibly the Super Senate President, will abide by agreed upon guidelines for attendance and reporting out of the PVC. Communication will also flow from PVC to faculty through currently established communication channels, starting with the college presidents to VPs, deans and chairs, and then to faculty. In this way, there are two communication processes to keep faculty informed. Faculty communicate up through the College Senate representatives to Super Senate and then to the Chancellor in regular meetings between the Super Senate and the Chancellor, as well as from Senate Presidents to their College Presidents and then to PVC. In this way, there are two communication processes to allow faculty input and feedback to reach college and district administration. Decisions are made in accordance with approved work plans. Each plan will be initiated with a work proposal to be approved by PVC. The work proposal will indicate the goals, outcomes desired, stakeholders, team, or committee members to work on the project or decision. The decision-making process itself, who decides how a decision will be finalized, the communication plan, and the timeline. Once the proposal is approved, the team will be formed to develop a work plan and a sponsor will be assigned from the PBC to monitor progress. The plan along with updates to progress throughout the process will be made available to faculty. Throughout the process, for all work plans, the above communication model will be followed to keep all faculty informed and to allow for input and feedback according to the plan. Model B. This model is comprised of two parts, a set of communication pathways and a project management process. The communication pathways in this model include the following modifications to current stakeholder groups and processes. The Super Senate President or SSP would sit in on the PVC in a non-voting capacity, but may be excluded from parts of PVC meetings due to legal requirements. As needed, the SSP may bring a subject matter expert to sit in on discussions. The SSP would produce meeting minutes to be distributed to all faculty through the College Senate Presidents, or CSPs. Each regular board meeting would contain a standing agenda item for report from either the SSP or a rotating CSP. The agenda item would provide an opportunity for presentations and dialogue about the current items in the project management process, as well as faculty perspectives on agenda items set for particular board meetings. 
If so designated in the project management process, the SSP, CSPs, and or a subject matter expert appointed by the SSP may meet with board committees when they are discussing a current project. The SSP would be giving a full course release in order to attend additional meetings, including the PVC, board meetings, board committee meetings, and meetings with individual college faculty senates. The CSP would each be giving an additional course release. The Super Senate would develop bylaws to govern its processes, including how to select items to be addressed to the board. The CSPs would not be tasked with administrative duties, but would focus on representing faculty views